electricity has become the part of modern world. Have we ever imagined a life without electricity? Often we tend to take electricity for granted. Do you know nearly 13% of world's population are still living without electricity? To know how this electricity is generated, continue watching. The scientists discovered a lot about magnetism and electricity in 19th century. One of their biggest discoveries is when a current flows through a conductor, a magnetic field is created. When scientists discovered this interesting fact, they wanted the opposite to be true. Could magnetic field create electric current? Two scientists, Joseph Henry and Michael Faraday, figured out that the magnetic field do induce or create electricity, but only under certain circumstances. The current is induced only when there is a change in magnetic field. This is the basic principle behind the generation of electricity. So, we need two basic things to generate electricity. One, a conductor to carry a current and the other one varying magnetic field. For magnetic field, we can either use a permanent magnet or an electromagnet. The electromagnet has a controllable magnetic field that is strong enough to induce large amount of voltage. So in most cases, electromagnet is used. The electromagnet consists of coil of wire wrapped around an iron core. The magnetic field is created when a current flows through the coil and it loses its magnetic properties when no current flows through it. The field of the electromagnet is similar to the field of bar magnet. The coil has a north pole at one end and a south pole at the other. Now, let's see a simple illustration of generating electricity. First, we need a conductor. So, we have wrapped it in a metal ring. Then we need magnetic field. For that, we are going to use electromagnet. A varying magnetic field can be created by rotating this electromagnet. This stationary metal ring is called stator and this conductor is called stator winding. And this rotating electromagnet can be referred as rotor. Since the DC supply is connected to the electromagnet, while rotating the electromagnet, the DC supply is also rotated. So to avoid this, we can use clip rings and brushes. As the electromagnet rotates, the magnetic field crosses the conductor and the voltage is induced. When the electromagnet is vertical, the magnetic lines do not cross the conductor and so no current flows through the conductor. As the north pole approaches the conductor, the current flow increases and reaches its peak value. And as the north pole starts to move away, the current flow decreases and reaches zero. As the south pole approaches the conductor, the current flow increases and reaches its peak value in opposite direction. As the south pole starts to move away, the current flow decreases in opposite direction and reaches zero. This process continues. Here, one cycle of current is produced for each revolution of rotor. So, we can understand that the frequency of the current generated and the rotor speed are related. But not all rotors are built like this that is with one north pole and one south pole. For example, here we have three north poles and three south poles. So, here each revolution produces three cycles of current. The output from our illustration is single phase. That is because we have only one stata winding. If we include two more stata windings, voltage will also induce in those two windings and we will get three phase output. This is how a power plant generator produces electricity. While explaining this concept, I have used the words as electromagnet rotates a lot of times. But how to rotate this electromagnet? Or in other words, how to rotate this rotor? For this purpose, a turbine is used. For better understanding, we can compare this with a pinwheel. The pinwheel spins when blown upon by a person or by a wind. Similarly, this turbine spins with the help of a steam, water or wind. Now. If we connect the shaft of this turbine with the rotor, then as the turbine spins, the rotor will also rotate. The types of turbines used in power plants are steam turbine, hydraulic turbine and wind turbine. The turbine which uses steam as its input is called steam turbine. Fuels like coal, natural gas, biomass and uranium are used to heat water until it produces steam. Then this steam is given as the input to the steam turbine. The turbine which uses flowing water as the input is called hydraulic turbine. 
This kind of turbine is used in hydroelectric power plants. Most hydroelectric power plants uses water from the dams. The turbine which uses wind as its input is called wind turbine. The blowing wind can turn its wings and the electricity is generated from the generator attached to it. The generator electricity travels to our house over power line. If you are interested in this kind of video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you will be notified each time I upload a video.